Hallelujah. I'm going to read a verse here tonight as they go down, and uh, then we're going to. Um, man's losing his shoe in the altar. Um, and then we're going to bring Luke to have him share the word of God. I'll re emphasize what I've been doing. Uh, I know people have wondered is it going to be just young men? No, I'm no respecter of young men, young women. I believe God calls both men and women. You know, there was a Samaritan woman at the well. She came because she's a woman of reputation. But Jesus went to that well on purpose. You know, people say that Jesus went out of his way to go to Samaria to touch that woman. Actually, the Jews went out of their way to stay away from the Samaritans. It was closer to go through Samaria than it was to go around it. And he says, I love the poetry of the King James. I must needs. I just like the way that sounds. I must needs go through Samaria. And there's a woman there. You know, Jesus began to minister to her. She was confused. Why are you being a man speaking to a woman, especially a woman of Samaria? And he said, just give me something to drink. She said, sir, what do you mean give you something to drink? The well is deep. You have nothing to draw with. He says, if you'd know who I am, you'd be asking me for something to drink. And then he goes on and gets into a religious conversation. And she perceives he was a prophet. She'll find out there's a whole lot more here in a minute. Amen. And so she started asking, when somebody finds out you're a Christian, they start asking spiritual questions. Uh, you Jews uh, worship in Jerusalem, we Samaritans in the mountains, uh, uh, prophet of God, which one's right? He said, neither one of us. For the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshiper will worship God in spirit and truth, dot, 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 for God is spirit. Amen. She came empty that day and left a full vessel of God and she went and told come on tell me that women don't have the ability to go tell <laughs> well, I didn't mean it that way but I praise God uh, <laughs> they have the ability could you imagine she stood and told everybody knowing the kind of woman she was come see a man that told me everything. Oh, my God. What does he know? But let me tell you, God used women to go tell. He told, he told the woman at the tomb, go tell him. So it's not just men. Amen. God uses women to also share the gospel. It just so happens it's just these three young men that we picked for this month. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, Kevin Brubaker, and then last week, Jacob, and then tonight is Luke. So before Luke comes, I want to read a verse that um, I believe is going to, it kind of helps sum some things up here. I'm thankful for those everybody should know, maybe those who's coming recently, but uh, it was uh, Pastor Rothwell who's sitting in the back, back there, that, that took me as a young man, young, slender, Nice wavy hair. And uh, I did. I had, you know, I had, I had some good hair back then. And, uh, but, and put me in this pulpit. And it changed my life forever. And this past June of 23 was 40 years ago. 40 years ago. I was only five years old when it happened. <laughs> Amen. Well, if you didn't know how old you were, how old would you be? Amen. So anyway, but here's these verses here that I want to read in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Paul was telling Timothy and those who read the word of God. Remind them, in verse 14, remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, but be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing 
the word of truth. Amen. Present yourself before God. A workman that doesn't need to be ashamed. One who rightly divides the word of God. Then he gives, all, he gives further warning down there. But shun profane, profane and idle but babblings. For they will increase into more ungodliness. And it gives a way of living there. But this is not a preaching contest. As I mentioned last week, this is a place where we're safe. I talked about Samson. I talked about Samson being called to be a deliverer. He was from the camp of Dan. There were no enemies. There was no Philistines in the camp of Dan. But the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came up on Samson in the camp of Dan. God familiarized Samson with his anointing when the enemy was not around. And I believe that he should be able to raise us up in a place where we're safe. That we don't have to recognize the anointing amongst the enemy or amongst mockers or scoffers. Because the truth is we're not all perfect. And we need to always be in a place to where people love and encourage. Amen. Come on. That's why it's important that people come and, and say amen. Because no one feels worse than the one who gets done. I don't care if you just give an announcement. You're like, dear God, I blew that. Come on. I mean, I've almost prayed the prayer. Lord, if you forgive me for trying to preach that message, I'll never try to do it again. I mean, we've all faced things to where... We are challenged, but this is the house of safety. It's a house of protection. It's a house where we can learn. It's a house where we can grow. It's a house where we encourage one another. Amen. Yes. And so uh, me preaching now, you know, at 57, getting ready to be 58 is a whole lot different than somebody 20, 21, 22, and uh, Kevin's a little bit older than the rest of them, but it's a whole lot different. And so we want to make sure that not only... Or we're saying, oh, they're doing a good job. We open our heart and we listen. We allow God to minister. The reason why I sat with them is because we want to be diligent and rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're, they're not just going to be up here. Important is that we're going to rightly divide the word of truth. A workman needs not to be ashamed. Nobody's going to be ashamed. Amen. It's going to be a time where we can enjoy. It's going to be a time of victory. And it's going to be a time of learning. The house of God ought to be a place where people can grow and develop. That is why every Sunday morning at 930, we have these discipleship classes for adult, different for adult classes that you can come in a small group setting and learn. It's called discipleship. Well, that's too early. Discipleship comes from discipline. You discipline yourself to go. Amen. I realize, I realize some of you are just, um, what a word I want to use. Um, you've just perfected lateness. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, I believe God's delivered you out of such stuff and you're going to continue to grow and develop into things of God. Amen. Having said all of that, as I've said all the rest of them, I love this young man. I've said it to all three of them now. And uh, we want to uh, welcome Luke. So give him a great big welcome as he comes and opens his heart to the word of God. Amen. Love you. Praise God. Let's give Lord, the Lord a hand clap out here. Come on. I'm believing I'm not going to lose hair by I'm his age. That's not going to happen to me. These luscious curls are going to be here when I'm 58, almost 58. Okay? I'm believing that. And your wife's believing too. Yeah, she's believing that too. All right. Well, at least you Everybody knows what this is, right? Yeah. This is what we live by, right? Yeah. Right? So in this right here, this does not say we can live however we want, right? We're going to talk about sin tonight. I spoke about love the other day. I could have brought those notes, but I decided to bring sin. So we're going to talk about sin tonight. When did sin become justified is what I'm going to talk about, okay? People, th people think now sin is so cool. Cussing, smoking, drinking, the list goes on. It's not only caught the eye of the world, but even the church. Sin is even in the church now. You ask what I mean. Some Christians have become immune to sin around them 
Some Christians aren't standing for their faith. They have no backbone. Some Christians seem to not care anymore. Some Christians even let sin take over their own life. Some Christians have even saved, been saved and haven't fully let sin go. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Anybody know that verse? Let's just go ahead and turn there. Galatians 5.9. A little leaven leavens the whole lump, just like I said. Leaven being like yeast makes the dough rise. Leaven in the yeast makes the dough rise. Just a little bit of leaven makes the whole loaf rise, right? Just a little sin in your life can cause a lot of heartache. Just a little bit of sin leads to more sin if you don't get that pruned out of your life, right? God wants us to be without sin. Notice how I said Christians when I went down that list of the five, the five different things. People who say they believe in God, who've asked God to be in their heart. Christians, believers. I'm not talking about people who don't or didn't ask God to be in their heart. I'm talking about Christians, believers, just like I said. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ tonight, there will be elders here at the end of service. And you come up and ask them about what I mean. Because if you're not saved, this is not the time. Not, 2024 is not the time to not be saved. If you haven't seen outside, it's not getting any better out there. It's time to live like the end is near. Pastor talked about Dr. Barclay's list that he gives. His, uh, his list for the whole year. We've already been checking off some of those, those checkpoints on there. And the year just started. It's February. Go ahead and turn with me to Timothy 2, 3. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 3, my bad. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. You hear that? Does that look like it is outside? It's time to wake up, church. You don't have the time. This is not the time to be cold. Does anybody know what God said about being cold? We either need to be hot or cold. There's no in-between. You're going to be spewed out of his mouth, he said. You'd be spewed out of his mouth. I'd rather be hot right now than cold. This is the time that you need to know where you're going. You're either going to heaven or hell, and it's real. It's time to know that heaven and hell is real. It is our job as Christians to go out and tell people heaven and hell is real. Has anybody been going on the interstate and they see heaven or hell? Is it real? Yes, it is real. I went with Pastor on Friday to read in in Indiana. And there was a man that we went and seen for a officer's, it was an officer's dad. And he was unconscious. He, He couldn't wake up. You know, his spirit might heard that. But let's not get to that point. Let's not get to that point where somebody, we have to desperately seek out and wonder. We wonder if they don't wake up, where are they going? Come on, church, it's time to wake up. It's time to let people, heaven is real and hell is real. It's not a game. Life is not a game. I don't know why people take it so light and so just nonchalant. Life is real. We have a job to do. And I wasted some of my life, you know. Before I got my life in check, 
before God really dealt with me, I wasted that. And I look back now and I'm like, why? Why did I do that? You know? Right now, check yourself. Check yourself before this service is over. Are you doing what God wants you to do? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself. It's time we take a stand against sin. It's not okay to be around us. It's not okay to be in our homes. It's not okay to come out of our mouths. It's not okay to be seen in front of our eyes. It's not okay for my kids to be in it. It's not okay for my friends to be in it. It's not okay for my mom to be in it. It's not okay for my dad to be in it. If you have a loved one, it's time to wake up and get them saved. Come on, church. First Peter 4. Turn there. Four one. Therefore, since Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live for the rest of his time in the flesh, for the lust of men, but for God, but for the will of God. Is that, when, I, when I read this verse, when I was sitting there and I was trying to get my notes together. This hit me so hard. I just felt the presence of God just come on me when I read this verse. Do we understand what that means? Jesus put cast flesh aside. When he was on that cross, all, all the sin was on him, but he cast it aside, right? That's what we need to do. We need to cast sin aside. We're not, we're not going to live no more for men. We're not going to live no more for the world. We're going to live for God's will. Each and every one of us have a, perp- a purpose in the world for God. Right? Yes. Yes. Each and every one of us. Things worth defending. Things worth defending. 1 Peter 3.15, it's just on the upper part of that page if your Bible's like mine. 1 Peter 3.15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Look at defense. What are things we're defending in our life? Right? What are things that we're standing up against? It shouldn't be sin. Why are there so many Christians defending sin? Why are you not defending our pastor, defending fellow believers, defending God, defending the Holy Spirit? Why are you just sitting there defending sin? These are things we need to think about. This verse... Set your heart aside for Christ to be fully honored. Peter is saying this to all Christians. Defend our hope. Our hope that Jesus died for us and we have eternal life. That is our hope. We know where we're going. Heaven is real. We know if we're saved and we have Jesus in our life, that we're going to go to heaven and be with Jesus in heaven, right? That's our hope. If somebody's going against your hope, then why in the world are you not defending it? Why are you just sitting there letting it happen? But you'll sit there and defend sin? Come on, church. I've been in that place. I've defended sin. I can remember when I was sitting here thinking about what I was going to say. I can remember when I was with my dad, when I was in the lowest point of my life, and I could see that I was sitting and we were going right past Speedway. And he said, you're not sorry. You're just sorry you got caught. You're sorry you got caught in sin, son. You know, that hit me harder than anything. Because I, it just hit me so hard. I had a conversation with somebody the other day. And we were talking about a sinful matter. And they were defending sin without even realizing it. And I, and I asked them, do you realize what you're doing? You're defending sin. I'm just sitting here looking back. And I was like, look, you're defending sin right now. And you didn't even realize it. Check yourself, church. 
I had to check myself. My dad checked me. The Holy Spirit would check you. I can still remember it, man. That was a dad moment right there. It doesn't matter if it's a loved one, a friend. It doesn't matter who's in sin. Don't defend it. It doesn't matter what it is. Sin is sin, right? Sin is sin. It doesn't matter if you stab somebody. It doesn't matter if you lied. Sin is sin. Sin is sin, church. We have a prize to win. We have a prize to win. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians 9.24. Hopefully everybody knows this verse, or this set of verses. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but the one, the one who receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who compete, competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do not obtain a perishable crown, but we for and a perishable, well, let me restart, I'm sorry. Now they do it and obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. If you don't have that highlighted, that's a good verse to highlight. Therefore I run this, not with utterancy, this I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it to subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. We have a race to run. That race to run and fight to fight is to get to heaven. Who wants to go to heaven? I do. I want to go to heaven. Run the race with everything you got. You have a prize. You have to win this prize. Because if you don't win this prize, you're going to hell. Okay? It's pretty simple. The Bible is pretty simple. The prize is eternal life. Don't get yourself disqualified. This is not a race that you want to get disqualified from. Amen? Amen. 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 That's all I got. Praise God. Huh? Oh, and uh, they said there's three rules in the preaching. Stand up, speak up, shut up. So he, he did all three of them tonight in a little bit of time. Amen. I want you to come back up here, though, Luke. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, I've had all of them pray over the people uh, before they, they did this. Uh, you know, you, you, people ask me all the time, Pastor, what, what do you think I'm called to do? Well, you know... I don't know, you can always see different signs and different things in people. But these things manifest themselves the more we go. And uh, you know what we are called to do now is encourage all of them and let God work out the details. Amen. We'll let God work out the details and everything is on there. But uh, you did well tonight, son. And uh, we thank you. Let's all stand together. I want Luke to pray over you. And I I think you ought to, if somebody's here that... uh, the 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 elders will be to be here at the end of the service like you said they can come but maybe you want to challenge someone tonight with their head bowed or something and just see if anybody here needs to be born again and then you can pray over them okay dear holy father thank you for this night thank you for bringing us each and every person into this this holy place father that we call covenant of peace thank you for bringing your presence into this place tonight Thank you for speaking through me, Father. May they not hear my voice or heard my voice. May they have heard your voice, Father. Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here tonight that doesn't know Jesus, Father, may you prick their heart. And Lord God, have your way in them. In Jesus' name, amen.